Chartoff Winkler proudly present Rocky III. The worst thing happened to you that could happen to any fighter. You got civilized. Get out of here, will you? The truth is, we both started out on the same corner, and I got lucky with my life, and it's driving you nuts. Philadelphia salutes its favorite son, Rocky Balboa. Why don't you tell all these nice folks why you've been ducking me? This guy is a wrecking machine. You know, you've got a big mouth. Why don't you come out and close it, Balboy? Come on. I want to fight you. this guy. You find him without me. Get out of here. Balboa was a fine champion, but his time has passed. See that look in their eyes, Rock? You gotta get that look back, Rock. I the tiger. Come on. I will destroy any man who tries to take what I got. <laughs> I'm gonna torture him. I'm gonna crucify him real bad. For the first time in my life, I'm afraid. Damn, Ron, come on! There's nothing wrong with being afraid. You thought I was tough? This jump will kill you. You wake up after a few years thinking you're a winner, but you're not. There is no tomorrow. You're really a loser. Well, I don't believe it. There is no tomorrow. Come on, come on, come on, come on. It's Rocky's greatest challenge to save his honor, his marriage, and his manhood against his most devastating and dangerous opponent. Bust you out. Go for it. Sylvester Stallone, Talia Shire, Burgess Meredith, Carl Weathers, Burt Young, and introducing Mr. T. Rocky III, an American tradition. episode of the B Movie Club. I'm your host Kevin and this week we're going to be discussing the 1982 sports classic Rocky 3 starring Sylvester Stallone, Mr. T, Hulk Hogan. The list goes on and on. For those of you guys joining us for uh, the first time, the B Movie Club is like a book club where every week I will post online what movie we'll be discussing and you can respond via Twitter at KD9575 on our original B Movie Club page on Facebook or on our page on YouTube. Um, tell me your favorite scenes, your favorite quotes, any movie suggestions you have, any questions or comments, send them on in. Don't forget to uh, subscribe to our page on YouTube. It doesn't cost any money. Just go on there, sign up, click the subscribe button. Also on Facebook, don't forget to click the little thumbs up button on our website um, on Facebook. If you click that button, then you'll be you have access to all the latest posts, all that good information that you only get right here. And don't forget to tell a friend. Rocky three. Basically, what's happened up to this point is Rocky just beat Apollo Creed a year or two ago for the national championship of the world of boxing. He is the champ. Um, he goes on um, and defends his title ten times. Meanwhile, there's a disgruntled uh, Clubber Lang, played by Mr. T, who is working his way up through the, uh, the boxing ranks, jealously uh, waiting his turn. Um, eventually the time comes. Rocky's now super wealthy. Very well dressed, articulate, well spoken, cleaned up, has a nice haircut for, you know, 1982. Um, and he's set to retire. He's decided, you know what, enough's enough. I've taken too many shots to the head as it is. I've got a, a child. I'm married now. 
you know, I've got a crazy car that I can drive around on my property. It's all very nice. Uh, so he decides, to, you know, the city of Philadelphia presents this giant statue to him, and at that point he decides, I'm going to announce I'm going to retire. Meanwhile, Mr. T jumps up out of the crowd and says, you know, you've been ducking me. Give me a chance. Um, he wants to be the new heavyweight. Um, again, Rocky's like, no, 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 I'm, I'm going to retire, but one way or another, Mr. T convinces in his own, <laughs> in his own way to... Uh, it's Rocky to go ahead and go back to the ring. Mickey, Rocky's old uh, crusty uh, trainer, says, if you go back and fight a rock, I quit. You're going to do it without me. By the way, get ready for a lot of crazy uh, impressions this episode. I'll do my best here, okay? <laughs> Some things about this movie. Um, Rocky... At the beginning of every Rocky movie, they kind of do a little uh, vignette of what happened at the end of the previous movie. So, the, you know, at the very beginning of Rocky, you see Rocky beating Apollo, looking big, but not necessarily as muscular as you go on to become. Like smash cut to, here's Rocky now, just looking shredded, just cut, like not an ounce of body fat. In fact, uh, Sylvester Stallone said he had 2.8 uh, percentage points of fat. 2.8. That's ridiculous. It's crazy. Uh, you know, and this is basically the body that we're used to seeing of Rocky throughout the rest of the, of the time. Up to that point, again, he was big, but kind of massy, not nearly as uh, striated, if you will. Uh, so, he's all cut. He's ready to go. He also has a fancy haircut. He's much more well-spoken. He had a Rocky, too. He had, like, a detached retina. He was illiterate. He had all these problems. Now it's a few years later, he's the champion. Hey, I guess he took some night school classes. I don't know. Got some LASIK surgery. None of that stuff's ever mentioned again. Now he's like quoting Shakespeare. He's singing songs. He's, he's very eloquent, to say the least. Um, of course, we see Apollo Creed is back in this one. Uh, San Diego State's own Carl Weathers. Can't go wrong with that. He's in it. Mr. T, this was actually Mr. T's first film debut. He found Mr. T. Mr. T was, I guess, voted uh, the world's toughest bouncer two years in a row. He was like a club bouncer up to this point. Um, and his name is obviously not Mr. T. Okay? His name is Lawrence Tarod. I think I'm pronouncing that correctly. From Chicago. And originally, <laughs> his haircut was going to be a, a giant T. He was trying to shave a T into the back of his head. Messed it up. And then he kind of changed it to come up with his signature mohawk. So there you go. Um, Hulk Hogan, like I said, was in this. Also his feature film debut. So, I mean, I sat down, I want to say last year, with my brothers. And we talked about which Rocky movie is the best. In my opinion, it's Rocky 3. Hands down. Rocky 1, boring. Sorry, I said it. It's sacrilege. It is boring. There's way too much of Rocky's romance with Adrian. I don't care about that stuff. I don't want him romancing the girl who works in the pet shop. I want fighting in the ring, for goodness sake. Boring. Um, Rocky II was basically unwatchable. Again, hey, sorry, boring, not particularly interesting. Again, Rocky is this illiterate, <laughs> they tried to put him in commercials in that movie. He couldn't read the cue cards. It was, it was depressing and sad. Um, this is the first one where there's like fireworks. And they had Eye of the Tiger. Eye of the Tiger, it's the thrill of the fight. Anyway. That became the theme song, and that was Apollo. It's, you got the eye of the tiger, Rock. You got the eye of the tiger. That's my Apollo impression. Um, that was a big hit by Survivor, which was a band at that time. And actually, the band had, had almost broken up. They'd actually kicked the lead singer out of the group and brought in a different lead singer. But when that song became the theme song to Rocky, they kind of had to reunite to uh, push that song. So there you go. Originally, the, uh, the inspirational song... <laughs> was going to be slightly different. It was the, the song that actually went on to be used in The Karate Kid. So there you go, during their, uh, during their uh, special fight scene. So, when, when Rocky passed on it, it went on to Karate Kid. Anyway, so there's a lot going on with this. Burgess Meredith is still in this. Granted, he kind of slumps over and dies, but... He'll kill you inside of three rounds, Rock. He'll kill you dead. That's my Burgess Meredith impression. You might notice all my impressions sound very similar. What can you do? I'm not rich little here, okay?
and do what I can do. Um, a lot going on. There's actually uh, a cameo from Rocky's wife at the time. She comes up and kisses Rocky on the cheek. So there you go. There's a blonde woman. That was his wife at the time. So there you go. So all sorts of good things going on here. This is actually the first um, Rocky movie where they showed the fight in its entirety. Because, remember, at this time, uh, pre in the previous movies, I should say, uh, it was all about Rocky could go the distance with anybody. So it's like he had the heavyweight champion of the world, Apollo Creed, but he could go 12 rounds with him. He could take his punches. Um, but in this one, it only goes like three rounds. Both fights go under three rounds. Um, basically, Apollo takes Rocky and he says, you know what, we're going to turn you into like that kind of dancing Muhammad Ali style of boxing, which kind of goes against Rock's old thing. Um, <laughs> and so he comes up with this whole strategy. He's going to dance around. He's going to he's going to fight, and then he's going to dance away, and it works. In the first round of the fight, he lands like 15, 20, 30 punches, and Clubber Lang doesn't even connect once. All from the dancing. Second round, Clubber lands a couple punches, and Rock immediately abandons the strategy completely. And now it's going to be some kind of crazy rope a dope, where he just takes headshot after headshot after headshot from Clubber Lang until I guess Clubber Lang gets tired. His knuckles get bruised too much. He's, oh, I can't hit him in the head anymore. My hands are tired. Um, somehow it works. I don't know. It just doesn't seem like a very good strategy to me. So in the first fight between Rocky and Clubber Lang, they announced that uh, Rocky's weighing like a 202 pounds, and Clubber Lang is listed at 235 pounds. Here's a big problem I have. I mean, this is a real issue. In boxing, they have weight classes, as, as you may or may not know. And the last class is called heavyweight, which starts at 200 pounds and goes to infinity. Evidently, you could be a 700-pound uh, behemoth squaring off against a 200-pound man, and that's totally legal. So anyway, he's 202 pounds. After training with Apollo for however many months, he comes back in the ring for the rematch weighing 192 pounds. Oh, he lost 10 pounds. So effectively... To battle a 235-pound Mr. Mr. T, he goes down a weight class. Sound like a good strategy? Not to me, it does it. And again, he abandons the whole I'm not going to get hit strategy to I'm going to take as many shots to the head strategy as I can. I don't know who his advisor was. I guess this was just Stallone's thing. What can I say? Not the best plan the world has ever seen. <laughs> anyway, I love Rocky III. It is a it is very inspirational. Uh, if you have not seen it, I highly recommend it. There's one scene <laughs> where uh, Rocky's training with Apollo on the beach, and Rocky's got his groove back, I guess, because he was dealing with this kind of uh, crisis of uh, courage, essentially. He's afraid of Mr. T. Hey, who wouldn't be, right? Um, he gets his groove back, and him and Apollo go bounding into the, into the ocean, hugging each other. A little disturbing. I mean, at one point, Rocky looks like Apollo's special needs child. Can't explain it. <laughs> Later in the movie, you see Mr. T, or excuse me, earlier in the movie, or you see uh, Hulk Hogan, and they list him at seven feet tall. Okay, we know uh, Hulk Hogan's not seven feet tall, but they had to say that because if they said he's six six, then suddenly we start doing the math and go, wait a minute, is the slice alone like five six, or what's the story here? So, all this good stuff. All these things you might miss if you didn't watch this show. It is streaming instantly on Netflix, so go check it out. Um, next week, I'm going back to comedy. Also, on streaming on Netflix, we'll be doing Raising Arizona, one of the uh, Coen Brothers' earlier forays, starring Nicolas Cage, Holly Hunter, John Goodman. The list goes on and on. Uh, so go check that out, send in your questions and comments. Again, you can reach me at Twitter at KD9575. You can post on our YouTube page, the B Movie Club, and or on our Facebook page, the original B Movie Club. So check that out. As you know, I end every episode with a totally out of context quote, and here it is. Hey woman, hey woman, since your man don't have no heart, why don't you bring your pretty little self around my, my place, and I'll show you how a real man is. Mm -hmm.